Hello and good morning. Uh, today is a bit of a repair video. Um, as you know, I'm running various solar systems here with micro inverters, and two of them have now failed. Let's take a look. Good, so I'm getting a bit of a head start here because there is a brilliant video by a guy called Volt Ampere Lux who has repaired the very same inverter. And very obviously, this over voltage, uh, what's it called, Verista, has blown his guts out and spooned it all over those ICs here. And um, this one seemed to be okay, but I'm replacing it anyway. And also he found that one of the gate drivers had blown. So I'm just replacing the very same parts that he replaced and uh, we see if it helps. All parts replaced. Let's put it back together and test. Okay, let's plug in AC. Yeah, which way? No pop. Let's plug in DC. Still no pop, but now it takes a couple of minutes until it actually engages. And by the way, um, some people will tell you that it takes the inverter like three minutes to synchronize to the grid. Uh, technically, that's not quite correct because all the Chinese ones they will um, start immediately. This one even has it written on it, 2 minutes 20 seconds, and it's a legal requirement. Like The inverter has to monitor the grid, that it's um, within the normal frequency and voltage ratings, and only then is it allowed to feed in energy. So that's why the wait time exists. And the wait is over, it is looking good. We are drawing 1.5, 1.6 amps from the solar panels. Which is quite okay, because they're not actually in the sun yet, because roof. And with that one out of the way, we can turn to the next one, and that is um, not really a legal inverter, because, for example, it doesn't have the grid wait time, uh, it doesn't have a relay um, for separating from it from the grid, and all other and all sorts of other legal um, requirements. And yeah, well, most of all, when I unplugged it, it blew two MOSFETs. So I'm gonna replace them. Uh, it also blew a trace here and uh, a voltage limiting diode. So that's all uh, needs to be replaced. And then, <clears throat> first of all, I'm gonna check if it, uh, if it feeds in power again. And then we move on to some optimization. So <clears throat> I think, Replacing these MOSFETs, um, so yeah, the problem is it quickly overheats. It's rated at 700 watts, as you can see here. Actually, on the outside enclosure, it says 600 watts. Yeah, no, not sure where that is. So that underlines uh, how how legit all these ratings are. Anyway, so. Um, I don't think these MOSFETs uh, would be the problem because they're only conducting like 2 amps of uh, the, the grid current. Um, same goes for these diodes. Um, I actually measured them and they don't become very hot. Um, what I think is the main problem is these low voltage MOSFETs right here. So I've ordered some higher quality parts and I'm gonna swap them in once we confirm that actually the inverter is working. And also I've ordered some more L-caps to supplement the existing ones because, yeah, some reading suggests that that really helps efficiency as well. All right, MOSFETs replaced. Will it blow right up when I plug it in? Let's see. Okay, didn't blow up. Red, green, blinky blinky, displays us a couple of watts. And uh, the DC, yeah, we get one amp. Great! Okay, my last good MOSFET was actually destroyed by um, 
another explosion and after that I found out one of the gate resistors was high impedance <coughs> and so now I swapped in you can see a non-matching MOSFET from an old um, laptop power supply uh, which is yeah, not the best choice but anyway I was then going to do an efficiency um, calculation based on the power displayed here compared to the power displayed here but that <coughs> doesn't work so well. I'll show you why. Good. You might witness another explosion. I'm not sure. Because I'm running it at fairly high power now. Yeah, you can see from this sort of fluctuating values it's impossible to obtain a proper power figure. It's holding up so far. Yeah, so instead um, I'm letting this run, let's say for five minutes at whatever power. Oh, is this it? Oh, okay, now this time the power supply conked out. Oh, thanks very much. Um, yeah, I was going to let it run at some power and um, and then just see where the temperature climbed and then switch the MOSFETs for the supposedly better ones and see what that does. Yeah, still not quite sure what it's actually doing. I've set the current limit to 6 amps and as you can see it kind of fluctuates between 3 amps and 9 amps. Average 6. Could be. Um, and here on the little power meter we're getting 150 watts. Yeah, so I put those figures in the calculator, 28 times um, 6. And uh, those 150 watts over there, and that would be 89% efficiency. Not very high. We've been running for almost 5 minutes now. I'm currently measuring the DC switching MOSFETs and they are at 40 degrees and after I've removed power I will measure the enclosure temperature. No, it's, it hasn't warmed up at all. Okay, five minutes pass. Um, we are at 39 degrees. Oh, and the power supply is decided to, to turn off after five minutes. Perfect. Okay, current limit is now 10, so let's just say we are putting 280 watts in and we're getting 235 out. Um, I've also added a fair bit of bulk capacity. The existing caps are 1500 each, so 6000, and I've added another 15000. So, um, yeah, that, that also helps uh, the ripple here and uh, it's supposed to also help efficiency. The inverter is back on the table and all optimizations just led to more failures. So I, yeah, I've added those extra L caps, uh, replaced the MOSFETs which uh, didn't help um, and then I let it run. I put it in in the, in the evening when it was just doing like 100 watts, that was okay. And the next day, when it got like, I don't know, 400, 500 watts of DC power, it failed again. It blew its own fuse. Uh, it also blew my house fuse, so I lost internet connectivity. <laughs> yeah, whatever. And then, um, to find the failed MOSFET, I started snipping the legs. You might be able to see it here. And then that led to... Oh, that led to this component actually lighting up like a candle. I don't think it's worthwhile to keep fixing this. It's uh, just going to break down after it sees power. And um, yeah, also it seems like the... Let's go back to the thing. It seems like the main heat source is these transformers here. They heat up to 200 degrees under load. And yeah, I certainly won't be replacing them. 
Um, yeah, so I think this will go straight to the electronic scrap. Sorry. So I hope you still like this video. Uh, the good inverter repaired, working flawlessly. The bad inverter, um, well, finally completely broken. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.